guys, uh, I'm back with another book for you and I have to admit I didn't, I didn't want to do this book review because I didn't like this book. Uh, but I think it's important to talk about books that we didn't like and explain why. Uh, and we shouldn't just talk about the books that we like. I think it's important to say why, give our perspectives, our readings um, and see if someone agrees with you. So today is, as you've probably seen in the title, uh, The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. Uh, my copy is a library copy. It's a very small book, it looks like a Bible, actually. <laughs> All black. Uh, but it's actually a Penguin Modern Classics Edition. <clears throat> I don't have a copy yet, I don't know if I'm gonna buy one. Uh, I probably will, just because I think I want to reread this book when I'm I'm older, like in a few years, I would like to reread it just to see if my perspective uh, stays the same or not. Um, so it's quite a, a small book, and it was published in a way for adults, but it deals with um, coming of age topics like uh, teenage angst, alienation, loneliness, you know, self discovery, and all that. Um, so in case you you. In case you don't know, um, it was written in 1951, but it's set in 1949, so just after the first, the Second World War um, ended, and after I mean a few years after that, and uh, the protagonist's name is Holden Caulfield. He is 16 or 17 years old, and I can't remember now. I think he's 17, and um, he just got expelled from yet another very expensive private school and is just is supposed to be in school now just for a few days before his Christmas break starts and he's not supposed to come back after Christmas break. Um, but he gets into this big fight with his roommate and decides to leave on a Saturday and supposedly he only has to be at home on Wednesday. So his plan is to spend those few days just in hotels and walking around the city. So he takes a late night train to New York City and um, he checks in the hotel. That's basically it. Uh, so while he's alone in the big city, he decides to visit all his favorite pubs and favorite places. He catches up with some people from his past and um, he meets some new people. And basically that's all he's been doing. Um, he has some moments where he thinks, well, I should call this person, and he says, eh, but I'm not in the mood. And he does this a lot, he's not in the mood for a lot of things. Uh, there's one particular evening, um, he gets really, really drunk, and he decides that he can't wait anymore. He needs to talk to his favorite person in the entire world, and that's his uh, little sister, Phoebe, um, who's 10, I think she's 10. There's a problem here. His sister is quite upset when she finds out he was expelled again and, uh, you know, she, 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 she just had enough. She's at that point where, okay, the reason you're unmotivated and the reason that you don't have any future plans is not because of the school, it's not the school, it's the schools are not that bad, the teachers are not that it's you, you don't like anything, you just don't like anything. And she, she, she asks him, name one thing, I'm actually, I have the passage here. Um, name something you would like to be, like a scientist or a lawyer or something. So we're talking about a 10 year old girl and she's being really um, strict with his, <laughs> with her older brother. Um, and he says, I couldn't be a scientist because I'm not good at science. I couldn't be a lawyer because they're phony and they only care about making money. And, you know, he's all kind of, there's a lot of teenage angst here. So he's just, he's upset about everything. And he comes up with this idea um, and he continues. I thought it was if a body catch a body. Anyway, I keep, I keep picturing uh, all these little kids playing some game in this big field of rye and all. Thousands of little kids and nobody's around. Nobody big, I mean, except me. And I'm standing on the edge of some crazy cliff. What I have to do, I have to watch everybody if they start to go over the cliff. 
I mean, if they're running and they, and they don't look where they're going, I have to come out from somewhere and catch them. Catch you in the right. That's all I would, I would do all day. Uh, I would just be the catcher in the rye and all. I know it's crazy, but that's the only thing I would really like to be. I know it's crazy. So I think in a way, Holden would like to have his own personal catcher in the rye. Um, I think this sort of, uh, uh, he knows he has no future uh, plans. He's completely lost. He doesn't know what to do. He doesn't like anything. He doesn't want to be anything. He's just He's just existing at this moment. And I kind of think like he wanted to be the catcher in the rye because he wanted someone to be his catcher in the rye. And this is kind of a cry for help in my book. Um, so she gets really upset with him, but eventually, you know, they're friends again. Uh, but their parents uh, arrive, so Holden has to sneak out of the house again and um, he's planning to spend the night at his former English teacher's house uh, a guy that he knows quite well he knows his wife and they get along quite nicely and they just have you know another um, a conversation where the teacher obviously the teacher is going to give him a lecture because you know he's not happy with the fact that his former student who had some potential in English class um, is doing so, is is not doing what what he could with his potential. He's not even living up to his potential. So, um, they they are talking about the subjects uh, Holden had in in his last private school, and he says that he barely passed English, but he passed it. But he failed this class called called an oral ex oral expression, and it's a class where you just have to give speeches. Um, you just have to stand in front of the class and give a speech, talk about something. And if you start to digress from the subject, the students can scream or yell aggression. And you know, the goal is not to digress. So you know, if if you have your colleagues saying digression a lot, you probably failed the class already. And he failed the class because he couldn't keep his mind focused on a, a topic. But he actually gives the example of this other student. And he says, let me just see what that is. Uh, okay, so... They kept yelling digression at him the whole time. He was making it, so the speech. And this teacher, Mr. Vincent, gave, he, gave him an F on it because he hadn't told what kind of animals and vegetables and stuff grew on the farm and all. So this kid was supposed to be talking about his father's farm. What he did was, um, he would start telling you all about that stuff. Then all of a sudden, he would start telling you uh, about this letter his mother got from his uncle and how his uncle got polio and all when he was 42 years old and how he wouldn't let anybody come to see him in the hospital because he didn't want anybody to see him with a brace on. To which the teacher asks, don't you think there's a time and place for everything? Don't you think if someone starts out to tell you about his father's farm, he should stick to its guns, and then get around to telling you about his uncle's brace? Or, if his uncle's brace is such a provocative subject, shouldn't he have selected it in the first place as his subject, not the farm? Uh, so, Holden here is just, you know, telling you the story, and he's just like, I, I had a really big headache and I didn't feel like talking. So he just said, yeah, I don't know. I guess he should. I mean, I guess he should have picked his uncle as a subject instead of the farm if that interested him, interested him most. But what, what I mean is, lots of times you don't know what interests you the most till you start talking about something that doesn't interest you most. I mean, you can't help it sometimes. What I think is, you're supposed to leave somebody alone if he's at least being interesting and he's getting all excited about something. So. The fact, the fact of the matter is, Holden just couldn't go by the rules. So the rule of the class is, I call you, you stand up, you come here in front of the class, you give a speech about a topic of your choice. It's a very simple rule. But still, he thinks that the teacher was wrong in failing his classmate just because he didn't stick to the subject. So in the instructions. And... Um, 
And Holden just can't see that. He kind of feels like everything should be uh, considered an effort. And, you know, at least he's doing it, he's making an effort. So, you know, you should pass him just because, just because of that. Uh, a lot of things could contribute to Holden's behavior. So, we, yeah, he's a bit uh, upset with the world. He doesn't have any future plans. He has some future plans. He, he talks about going west, get a job, get married, have children. He, but he doesn't see, he, he doesn't foresee any difficulties with that. It's just, everything's going to be all right. I'm going to be fine. Um, but I think there's a lot of um, themes here and some symbols and can uh, contribute to his behavior. For example, his older brother is um, with someone that Holden admires, uh, went to Hollywood to be uh, a writer and he's upset about that because he thinks everyone who lives in Hollywood is phony, so you know now you're phony too and I don't want anything to do with you. His other brother, uh, who was younger than him, uh, passed away, Ali. He mentions Ali quite a lot, but um, when he starts talking about Ali, at some point he just stops. I think as a way to, you know, I don't want to give, uh, I don't want to express my feelings about this subject. I don't want to be just completely honest about it. I miss him, yeah, he was brilliant, he was a terrific kid, but you know, that's just not, that, let's just not talk about it. Um, and then he has Phoebe, who is a bright child. She's very, very intelligent. And, uh, she has very deep conversations, serious conversations with Holden. Holden and he, she tries to, you know, get him to focus. And she, she starts to get really upset and uh, frustrated because she can't. Um, their parents... Well, we don't have a lot of, we know some things about her parents. So his mother obviously suffered a lot after Ali's um, death. So she dealt with depression and she still has um, frequent headaches. Uh, his father is a lawyer. Uh, we know they live comfortable, comfortably, but um, we don't know at, to what point they are, you know, they're there, they're present um, in their children's lives. Um, and so all of this could contribute to Holden's uh, behavior. He can't really keep uh, a friendship. All of his friendships are kind of, like he said, not like he says, phony, uh, because they're friends, they're pals, they go out, but then they, you know, they have fights and they, they wrestle each other. And, uh, and Holden's just, you know, he always takes, takes it too far and, and ends up being expelled. Um, one thing that could probably, you know, add up to his behavior is the possibility that uh, Holden was abused uh, when he was younger. Um, just because when he's in his uh, English teacher's, his former English teacher's house, he, um, he wakes up in the middle of the night and his English teacher is there just watching him sleep and patting his hat. Um, and uh, Holden, Holden actually says, that this is not the first time it happens. Um, uh, boy, I was shaking like a madman. I was sweating too. When something perverty ha like that happens, I start sweating like a bastard. That kind of stuff happens happens to me happened to me about twenty times since I was a kid. I can't stand it. So there is a possibility here that Holden was abused as a child. And um, obviously this would add up to his behavior and his just a lack of interest in everything. Um, also, besides uh, affecting his behavior academically, um, I think it also speaks uh, high volumes about his behavior with girls. Um, so he's always, he, he, he wants to appear like he's an experienced grown-up um that he had a lot he, he has been with a lot of girls when in fact he hasn't and he he compares himself with his with his classmates that sometimes the girl says that she doesn't want to do anything but you know they insist and they end up doing something and when a girl says no he he can't do anything he stops um he doesn't even try anymore so there's this feeling that you know if he was in fact abused as a child, he doesn't want to put someone through that. Uh
obviously um, this lack of interest and uh, this lack of prospects it's just they're normal to some extent when you are a teenager um, depending on your depending on your life a lot of times you just you just feel depressed and you just feel like there's no point in doing anything and to some extent that's normal I think holding here I mean there's something more there's something bigger behind it and uh, the language is also important here um, it doesn't he, he, he uses the expression and all a lot uh, I didn't like this why well it was boring and all and all and all I, he doesn't even make an effort to try and come up with an argument to just you know organize his ideas and explain why you didn't like why I didn't like this I didn't like it because of this this and this no because of this and all you're supposed to know what an all means. Um, so, you know, I at some point, I'm, it gets confusing if he's just being lazy or if just, he's just depressed to a point where he's wrestling himself. It, it, um, obviously, well, Salinger witnessed some horrors from the war and he could have written a, a novel about, you know, the war. He wrote this, which is kind of, it's considered a coming of age novel. And I, it makes sense, Holden struggling to understand himself in order to be able to continue with his life. So he says, in a, other passages in the book, he, he says this a lot, I don't know why I do this, but I do it. And it's just trying to understand what he can do to just change that and, and move on and, you know, just continue with his life. Uh, something that he wants to do but he can't um, I think it's an important novel I didn't like the story itself I, I thought Holden uh, you know besides besides having all these hints that he probably had some problems growing up or not we don't know um, could contribute to his behavior uh, there are some parts and a lot of parts where he's just you know he's just whining He's just being a brat, and um, that that was the thing. I just I didn't like it because of that. Um, I don't remember if I mentioned this in my first video, but uh, I'm not a fan of first person narrators. But I quite like this one um, because it was an easy read, and you know it was easy for you to you know pause, go do something, pick up the book again, and use. You know what's happening. It it was engaging in that sense because um, he, the the protagonist is really just talking to you, and in a way you kind of sense like you're part of the story as well. Like you're walking next to him, and you know going to visit all these pubs and meeting all these people. Um, but still, I think it's really a story of a teenage boy who just lost his way and is expecting someone to come and catch him before he falls off the cliff. And um, I wasn't a fan, but like I said, I would like to buy a copy of my own. So in a few years, I could reread it and see if I still have the same opinion or not. Um, I also think if you read this uh, when you are a teenager, you're going to have a different opinion if you read, when you read it again when you are an adult. I don't know. But yeah, I didn't like it because for most part, it just kind of fe felt like it was just whining the whole time. And you know, you could just stop and just just stop and let's start again. Uh, you have to start now. Let's, let's, that's actually what his teacher uh, tells him. If you want to do anything with your life, you have to start now, not in a year or two. You have to start now, you're 17. You're running out of time. Um, and it, it was actually the only person besides Phoebe, the only adult who just, you know, told him that. He, who was completely honest with him and just said, well, not just asking like, what are you doing? What are you doing with your life? I mean, don't you think you should study? No, it's just, you're running out of time. You have to do something now. And I thought that, was interesting and the, it was really what you know it's exactly what a teacher would say <laughs> um, so in a way it was it's 
it's an important conversation for him to have, but then everything is messed up with that awkward um, moment of the teacher watching him sleep, and it, you know, it just kind of destroy everything because he, again, his confidence and his uh, will to go on just you know starts to get smaller and smaller uh, because it happened again, like he said, it had happened to it had happened to him. 20 times since he was a kid, happen again. So things are not looking up. Um, yeah, so that's it. Uh, it wasn't my favorite novel. I didn't like the story. And, you know, there's really because the protagonist was just annoying me uh, a lot at some point. Uh, but I thought what he said in the last, in the last chapter, um, I thought what he said was quite interesting. Um, he said that if you start talking about the past too much, you start missing the people from the past. And you start missing the past as well. So he, he kind of, he ends the story saying, well, I'm going to go to school in the following September. So next September I'm going to go to school and uh, to a new school. And that's it. Like, I don't want to talk about it anymore. Um, I think I even missed that goddamn Maurice. It's funny. Don't ever tell anybody anything. If you do, you start missing everybody. So we just... I'm not going to talk about it anymore. That's it. Um, I think he had a lot of opinions about the people surrounding him, but he didn't have a high opinion or any opinion. He had no opinion of himself. And... Yeah. I think that's also important to, to analyze and to highlight. Uh when you have opinions about other people but you don't really know how your opinion about yourself it's time you, you have to stop and think about it so this book i read it because well first of all because i was curious second of all because it's the book we picked for our book club um the book club i have with some friends from work and this is for our july meeting so i finished it earlier um now I'm reading uh, Murakami's second volume of the 1984 series. I think I can say 1984, right? Because I don't know how to say the Q part. Um, I'm, uh, I also got a new book this week. So Dead Souls by Nikolai Gogol. I heard wonderful things about uh, Nikolai, I haven't read any of his works, so I'm excited about this one. And well, have you read it? Did you like it? <laughs> I'm also expecting another book, but it hasn't arrived yet. So uh, have a lovely weekend. The uh, what's left from it, and a lovely week. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.